Okay, time to start part two of the 15 weird Pokemon that somehow get worse than they evolve, which is actually not true, but whatever. And if you missed part one, I'll leave the link in the description, and if I remember that little card in the corner. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's continue into the top seven. Raichu. Oh my gosh, I, I know where this is going. Okay. Of the Pokemon on this list who lack new moves in their final form, Raichu is absolutely the worst. With only four moves learned through leveling up, Raichu lacks natural abilities and requires extensive use of TMs and HMs in order to gain new skills. So now you care about TMs and HMs? Back when you were complaining about Wigglytuff and Togekiss who have objectively way better stats than their prior evolution, you're just going to forget that TMs exist then. But now you're going to act like TMs are relevant? Uh, I don't understand where your logic is there. Uh, oh well. Raichu's stats are much better than Pikachu's, however, as long as P Pikachu evolves at a high level with a variety of moves, Raichu is actually a really good Pokemon. Otherwise, Raichu lacks moves and thus is ineffective in battle. Let's go to Ra Raichu real quick. Okay, so I'm not going to take a low on Raichu into account here, um, just because it's probably not going to be relevant throughout future games. Um, so... Saying it only learns four moves. That's a long one. Okay. So, Raichu still learns Quick Attack and Thunderbolt by Heart Scale, which are two, you know, pretty decent moves. But no, you're just going to, you know, ignore that. Um, really, Thunderbolt's all Raichu. Not saying all he needs, but that's really all that he. Like. You don't really need much more than Thunderbolt and like a couple of TMs in order to really make him useful. So I don't really get what you're trying to say here. Um, uh, being ineffective in battle when he actually can learn Thunderbolt and he was like Grass Knot and yeah and Brick Break even like those are you know decent moves that Raichu can you know pretty effectively and let's look at the stats real quick because I mean like you've said uh I mean Raichu does have way better stats and uh yeah um <laughs> attack went way up special attack went up by 40 speed went up by 20 so yeah Raichu's looking to be way better than Pikachu in every aspect not even to mention the defense that increases special defense goes up by what 30 and then defense goes up by 15 still so, HP goes up by what 25? That's insane. Yet you're going to say that Raichu got worse, even though it can still learn essentially Pikachu's signature move at Thunderbolt by technically level up? So what are you going to teach Pikachu prior to evolving it that will really make it useful? What? Slam? No. Uh, nuzzle? Fate? Like, what, what are you trying to argue here that it has to learn as a Pikachu before it can get useful. Because Raichu can learn Quick Attack and Thunderbolt by level up. And it can also learn, you know, Brick Break and all the other, like, good TMs that you already mentioned here that actually make him use more useful. I, I don't get what your argument is. Plus the... <sighs> oh, oh, well. In the Pokemon TV show... Pikachu refuses to evolve into Raichu and manages to defeat the evolved Pokemon. Thanks to Raichu's limited set of moves, which it can learn Thunderbolt, but whatever, a scenario in which Pikachu beats Raichu is very possible in the games as well. Despite Raichu's superior stats, a Raichu with few, with few to none of Pikachu's moves stands little chance against a well-trained Pikachu. Okay. Worst case scenario. You're going to evolve your Raichu probably at level 10 at the earliest. Because I think you can patch, catch Pikachu at like maybe level 5. And then by the time you actually get a get a, uh, a um, Thunderstone, like maybe level 10 if you're just not straining this thing. So at that point, it would know Quick Attack and Thundershock. Those are, I mean, they're not like good moves, but they're not terrible. That's still something. And you're... So let's just say that you didn't teach your Raichu anything else. 
the only attacking moves it knew were Thundershock and Quick Attack. Let's let's just look at these stats again. Raichu is way faster, which you you've already argued in a previous part that the faster Pokemon always wins. Apparently, when Magmar and Electabuzz are faster than their superior evolutions, but whatever. So Raichu being way faster doesn't mean anything here. Pikachu having way less defense and special defense apparently doesn't mean anything here. Raichu having way higher HP, which that is very significant, doesn't mean anything apparently. So even if a Pikachu knew, like Thunderbolt and Grass Knot, I guess, oh, and Brick Break, like, it still wouldn't really do anything against Raichu. And, like, even if you wanted to, like, do something more funky and have the Pikachu know things like agility and light screen, Raichu can still use Quick Attack. Like I said, if we're going off the worst-case scenario at level 10, it could still learn Quick Attack. So, you know, like, things like light screen and agility won't really be all that useful. And maybe if you use Slam, but, like, that's... I, that's not a very reliable move. And like I said, Raichu's faster anyway, so... The, I just fail to see how you could even possibly argue that Pikachu could possibly beat a Raichu in battle. And I already basically said the best case moveset that you could give a Pikachu to really even give him Saint a chance, and Raichu almost... And almost nearly any scenario Raichu would win like hands down especially with 40 with yeah 40 more special attack which is insane like I I honestly do not know what you're why you're trying to argue this right here Raichu is objectively better in every single way he just is <sighs> cut fable not uh, Great, another of another one of these um stone Pokemon that he thinks are worthless. All three forms of Cleffa have the ability of either Cute Charm or Magic Guard, as well as the possibility of acquiring a hidden ability. But that hidden ability differs from the final form, Clefable. While Clef Cleffa and Clefairy have the hidden ability Friend Guard, which I believe decreases damage by twenty five percent of all ally Pokemon, I think. Clefable has unaware. Which I'm not mistaken makes it so that when they're attacking you, um, stat increases don't come into account. So like if they have a Swords Dance up and they try to hit you with an earthquake, it'll just hit with like a normal. It won't that earthquake damage won't um, take the Swords Dance into account, but just for Kaleo. Friend Guard provides a great protection of your allies, whereas Unaware only protects the Fable. And again, I'll bring up Clefable real quick. Okay, so here we are with Clefable and, Clef and Clefairy. Um, and yeah, I was I was right about unaware. Let's look at these stats. So yeah, Clefable is objectively better in every single category, by a lot. It, it, the stats overall increased by was it 160? Yeah, that's a lot. And I I don't understand why he's trying to argue for the scenario where you're going to be having a not-magic guard Clefable in a double battle. A, there's no reason to not run a magic guard Clefable. There just isn't. <laughs> magic guard is one of the best abilities, and for a Pokemon this tanky... Now, it doesn't really look like he's super good. 95 HP is actually pretty good. And then 73 and 90 defenses. Like, those are not bad either. But given that Clefable has the ability to use Soft Boil through Egg Move and Wish and and not get poisoned, at least not get affected by poison, I, I just don't really see how you could possibly argue that Fairy's a better Pokemon than Clefable. Even giving Clefable the Clefairy the uh, the Eviolite wouldn't make him better than Clefable, I don't think. Or maybe like just 
barely, but still, like, you couldn't, if you wanted to like, try to attack, you couldn't really do anything with that, and your speed would be way lower. And then running a, um, running an Eviolite -like Clefairy wouldn't be better because you couldn't have a Clefable that could have consistent recovery with leftovers or some other useful move where as Clefairy, yes, you would essentially be giving Clefairy the ability to be, to be as defensive, just barely more defensive than Clefable if even, which I, I can't do the math right now in my head right now, but like regardless, it's just barely better if even than Clefable. At that point, why not just have a Clefable? It literally makes no sense. Clefable is an excellent Pokemon with higher stats, but Clefable and its previous forms are completely different. Not if you're just running Magic Guard, which is what people are going to do. No one is running Friend Guard. I honestly didn't even know that ability existed until I just read it right here. And then I looked, I guess it is technically a good ability, but no one's going to use it. People don't use Clefairies in double battles. Like, I've seen Clefables actually do pretty decently in double battles because of reasons I'll get into later. For players following particular plans, Clefable can, over, can overthrow strategies and reduce the strength of entire teams. Clefairy can support its party through Friend Guard and moves like Healing Wish, the move that you kill yourself in order to revive a party of Pokemon. Why not just... I don't know, use Clefable's Wish and then switch out. And then you can still have Clefable able to battle later. <sighs> Clefable solely supports itself, which I already just kind of debunked with stuff like Wish. Uh, also, it can learn Light Screen and um, Spotlight, which could, um, which you have shenanigans there. Um, also, Sing, put it, put it to sleep. <laughs> You can set up Rain Dance or Safeguard. It, it has a Reflect. It, it has, like, I, I, there's literally nothing that makes Clefairy better than Clefable, other than Friend Guard, which no one is going to use. And even if they were going to use it, they would use, Clef, they would only use Clefairy in, what is it called, um, a uh, Little Cup, or... Whatever the the tier is where you only use um, pre-evolved Pokemon, pretty sure that would be the only place where a friend guard Clefable would actually be vi viable. So, I I honestly just don't understand what you're getting at here. With few new moves and no moves that support the team except those provided by Clefairy, Clefable disappoints any player expecting a better version of Clefairy. They, what? Disappoints any player expecting a better version of Clefairy? This, you're literally singling out the only situation where Clefable would be worse is in a situation where someone wants to use a not Magic Guard Clefa Clefable in a double battle. Which isn't a thing because Clefable actually is pretty darn useful in like a Sand Team or a Hail Team. With Magic Guard up, like it can it can say there is not gonna take any damage from the Sandstorm. So, and then it's just there using like you know Light Screen Reflect Wish to help to help heal your team if you wanted to. Like there are just so many things that make a Magic Guard Clefable way better than a Friend Guard Clefairy. <laughs> Why would you sing out Healing Wish? Like, no one uses a Healing Wish. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, it's, it hurts me just how ignorant this guy is. It's almost like he wanted Clefable to be on this list just because he didn't like it, and then just had to, like, shoehorn in this one scenario where Clefairy, Clefable was worse, and then saying, okay, Clefable is bad because of this, which is not true. But whatever, let's just move on. As if Caterpie and Weedle weren't weird enough, Nintendo added a third cocoon Pokemon that's even stranger than its companions. Wormpool may follow two evolution chains. It can only it can evolve into C Cascoon and then Dustox, or Silcoon and then Beautifly. While Silcoon and Beautifly suffer the same problems as the evolution chains of Caterpie and Weedle, 
you mean the fact that its attack and speed decrease because it's a cocoon that makes sense? Cascoon and Dust Ox offer a one a wonderfully traditional evolution chain. Cascoon possesses the same stats as Silcoon, but Dust Ox's stats vary from Beautifly so that every single stat increases during evolution. Yeah, um, Beautifly has 60 base speed and 100 base special attack. So it's not going to need that higher defenses. It's it's not going to need high defenses because it already has way way too high a special attack for that early on in the game. A level ten beautify that can already you know use things like gust and absorbing and and a silver wind and whatnot like that's not that bad when you have a hundred base special attack. And Dustox's increase in yes it does increase every stat but its speed isn't all that good. Its attack and special attack, I think, are 70, or at least special attack is, and then defenses are, are like 70 or 80-ish. So it's fine, but it's not necessarily good. Yes, it is better than Silken in every way, but it's not. I wouldn't necessarily say it's better than Beautifly. Every Cocoon Pokemon, except Dustox, loses defense in its final evolution, making Dustox completely superior to Cascoon. So wait, so are you trying to say that Butterfree isn't superior to Metapod simply because it has lower defense? I'm pretty confident that a cocoon in real life is not nearly as fragile as a butterfly. Like you couldn't just like easily, you know, squat. It's gonna sound morbid. You couldn't easily just like squash a, ca a cocoon in your hand. Like you potentially could a butterfly. Butterfly are way butterflies are way more fragile than than cocoons are. So I don't. I just don't understand why you're so dead set on the idea that because these these Pokemon that comes out of cocoons have a lower defense, that means they're worse than the cocoon. That just doesn't make sense. <sighs> and again, Dustox being superior to Cascoon, yes, you are technically right, but I wouldn't say that Dustox is superior to Beautifly, especially when Beautifly's speed and special attack are way higher, and that honestly seems to be the only thing you seem to care about most of the time, having higher speed. The most frustrating part about Wormpool is that its evolution is completely random. There actually is like a way to calculate it. I don't, I don't know it, but I know there is a way to calculate it. Dustox provides the safest final form for new players. What do you mean? The Bee flies faster and has more special attack. If anything, Dustox is the more like technical one because it, it learns things like protect and toxic and like all these like weird like strategy based moves. Whereas Beautifly learns things like Giga Drain and um. And bug buzz and like, uh, do I learn? I don't learn gust. I don't think it learns psychic. At least by level up, it does by TM though. So beautiful. And the majority of new players, all they want to do is just attack things. I know when I started, I just wanted to attack things. Even now, I kind of have the tendency in game just to go for the kill all the time. I don't really focus on things like, you know, lowering defense and toxic and protect and stuff unless that's like what the Pokemon is there to do. So for new players, people are going to want to move towards Beautifly more because it attacks things hard, whereas Dustox doesn't really. Like, I remember back when I was first playing, my second playthrough, I think, of Sapphire, I got a Dustox. My first playthrough, I had a Beautifly. And Dustox just kind of wasn't hitting nearly as hard as I wanted to. Like I, And I kept thinking back to just how good Beautifly was, and it just wasn't hitting as hard, and I was just kind of disappointed in ending up ditching it for someone else. Probably a Swallowed or some, some other better poison type. So, no, Dustox is not better for, for new players simply because it has objectively all better stats than, than Cascoon. <sighs> But only half the players using Wormpool will acquire Dustox. Regardless of which final form you desire, Wormpool can enrage players seeking a specific evolution chain. Yeah, um, so first off, kind of like Metapod and Cast in a in Kakuna, Beautify and Dustox. Actually, no, um, Wormpool evolves at level six or is it seven? Either six or seven. So you'll know by level six, or I'll, I'll stick with six now. You'll know by level six which evolution you're gonna get. That's not very far in the game at all. You have time 
to either catch another worm pool and try to evolve that, or straight up just catch a cascoon or silcoon in Petalbug Woods. That is an option, you know. In Petalburg Woods, you could just easily just catch a Cascoon or Silcoon, depending on which one you want to be to fire Dustox. And Wormpool are pretty readily available all throughout the the game. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, in Ruby and Sapphire, in the third patch of grass you step in, every single time you start the game, you catch a Wormpool. So you're going to start off the game with the Wormpool regardless, and if it doesn't evolve into what you want, you just search around for a couple more steps and catch another one. Ugh. So, y y yeah, like, just nothing about this argument makes any sense, M much like the rest of your article. Oh, by Brava. Okay, okay. Chapinch's evolution results in the most confusing and detrimental stat fluctuations in Pokémon. Rava's high, Rava's HP, defense, special attack, and special defense increase by merely 5, and attack is lowered by 30, while speed increases by 60. But I thought higher speed made it better. You said that, you've said that, um, Pikachu could beat a Raichu. Actually, well, well, still, you said a Pikachu could beat a Raichu even though Pikachu is slower and has way lower, and way lower attack. You said an Electabuzz could beat an Electivire even though... Electabuzz has way lower attack and the same special attack, and Elect Electivire is only slightly slower. And same with Magmortar. You said a Magmar could beat a Magmortar just because it's faster. So now you're... And also, do how can you... I'll get to that in a second. Although the massive increase in speed might seem good, Trap Inch makes up for the inability to attack first with some fantastic abilities and moves. With the abilities Hyper Cutter and Shear Force and Arsenal of Physical Moves, Trap Inch's high attack guarantees massive amount of damage. Okay, let me go to Trap Inch real quick. Okay, so we're here with Trap Inch. And as of 2017, when you're writing this list, Trap Inch and Vibrava actually learn a very similar set of moves. Back in Gen 3 and even Gen 4, Trap Inch learned things like, um, like Crunch Dig, Earth Power, Earthquake, and even like Fisher, way later, like way after um, he would have evolved into even a Flygon. I think Fisher might have been like level 80 or something ridiculous like that. It was maybe not that high, but like pretty high. Whereas now, Trap Hint learned Crunch, Dig, Earth Power, and Earthquake all before it evolves into Vibrava. So you really, you honestly can't use that argument anymore, saying that Trap Inch has a much higher arsenal of moves, when that might have worked in Gen 3 and 4, and maybe even Gen 5, I'm not 100% sure, you can't anymore, because now Vibrava can easily learn all these great moves, just by, you know, leveling up a Trap Inch, level 35, it already knows Earthquake, Earth Power, Crunch, Dig, Rock Slide, and then you, you know, may, may or may not delete something for Dragon Breath. Vibrava, on the other hand, fails to make up for its increased stats and decreased attack. Make up for its increased stats and decreased attack, whatever. Higher speed means little because Vibrava lacks Trap Inch's offensive power. While Vibrava has a higher chance of being of beginning a fight, Trap Inch provides a far greater chance of victory. Um far greater chance of victory just, just because it has 30 more attack? Um, I mean, no, <laughs> trap inch really aren't all that useful, they're not really all that useful, like, and Vibrava is just, is the next step to a Flygon who has the same attack stat as trap inch and way higher every other stat, so you really can't, why are you judging Vibrava so hard when it's the middle stage? That, that just seems wrong to me. Especially since Vibrava, you know, given the new new move set it can have in Gen uh, six and seven, it's objectively still really good. Now, like I said, the attack isn't all that high. I, mean, I wish it had been like eighty or something. I I still I understand why it's why it is so low. Still, seventy isn't necessarily bad. It can still hold its own in battle just fine. 
and it has levitate and it has the dragon type so it's no longer weak to water <laughs> or, or it has uh takes less damage from from fire types and granted it has a four times weak to ice but like i mean trap would still die to one ice beam anyway so I just see no reason not to evolve Trap Inch into Virava, especially when Flygon is just as good, if not way, actually way better than Trap Inch. So, y y yeah, y you can't judge Virava so hard simply because it has lower attack than Trap Inch, but every other stat increases, especially that speed and the, it's a better type. <sighs> okay, let's just move on. Scizor! Oh. This is gonna enrage people. Like Scizor is actually like one of the most fan favorite Pokemon out there. I don't have like stats to back that up, but like I'm pretty sure he is. Also, he was oh he was at the top of the OU tier back in Gen Four, and even like in the top three in Gen Five. So this is gonna be fun. The base stats of Scyther and his final form Scizor both add up to a total of 500. Whereas almost all Pokemon gain higher stats, Scyther is one of the few Pokemon whose total stats remain the same during evolution. Okay, you had to trade it with a Metal Coat, and also it gained the, the Steel type. Um, so they wanted to balance it better by giving it high attack and high defense, but they realized, oh, if we give it high, high in those stats, we should probably lower its speed a little bit. So it just kind of ended up working out that it's, it ended up being 500 still. I mean, maybe it could maybe it could have been like you know five ten five twenty, but then you would have argued it didn't go up high enough, like you did with uh, um, uh, who was it? Magmortar. Scizor has increased attack and defense, but decreased speed. The evolved Pokemon also possesses fewer weaknesses to the various types of Pokemon, although Scizor is significantly weaker against Fire type Pokemon than Scyther. Okay, so you're gonna say that it has has way less weaknesses. But because it's super weak to fire, it's a worse Pokemon. While Scizor's new stats and immunities may benefit some players, the stats and weaknesses to fire may harm other players. Um, what? The stats? Oh, because it gets slower? I guess. The stats and weakness to fire may harm... Sy Sy Scyther already had a weakness to fire. Like, Scyther isn't, more than likely isn't going to survive... A flamethrower anyway, so why not just evolve it? It can learn Bullet Punch to at least get some damage in before, before it attacks. And like you said previously, in that little opening paragraph in the first episode of this, um, people are allowed to make different teams. So why not, if you have, if you want to have a Sith or, or even a Scyther on your team that's weak to fire, you get a good Water or Ground type. And then you balance your team from there. I... <laughs> Again, it's like he's looking at all these Pokemon in a vacuum, and it's like, oh, because he's weak to he's super weak to fire, he's useless. Well, whereas Scyther is nowhere near better than Scizor. Like earlier on, he kept comparing, saying that you know Magmortar and, Electiv and Electivire are not as good as their pre-evolutions because or pre-evolutions have potential to beat them in a fight which isn't actually true but at least i can understand that comparison better than pikachu and raichu which is even more so not true but whatever using that logic here what could scyther do to scizor air slash it's sure it's stab but it's not going to really do much because scyther's a t special attack isn't all that high i mean and all your you know bug moves are not going to are not going to be very effective. Night Slash will do neutral damage now. Now we're going off the six gen mechanics, but still, Scizor can then hit back even harder with his own Night Slash or Bullet Punch or or, um, or X Scissor, which again would be um, uh, not very effective, but it still would do more than uh, Scyther's. <sighs> Whatever. Regardless of different player strategy, the absence of increasing stats makes Scizor inferior to the majority of evolved Pokemon. It doesn't make it inferior to Scyther, though, which is what you're doing here. Scyther gains no, benef no benefits from evolving and should probably never be evolved. No benefits? 
even though you set up here the evolved Pokemon also possesses fewer weaknesses, that's a benefit. You you fire, if I'm not mistaken, is his only weakness. And now he's strong. Now Steel is strong against Fairy, so that's useful. Especially since Fairy is becoming more and more common. It's also used against Rock types, which which uh, which Scyther has no does cannot do anything to. And you have so many more resistances. Like not only do you have fewer weaknesses, you have way more resistances too than Scyther. So I I just simply do not understand where you're where you're coming from here in theory you should be comparing like scissor and Thy scyther like together period and having that higher defense and attack makes him way and the steel typing makes him way better than scyther saying that he's not he's scyther evolving doesn't make him better than other pokemon evolving is very flawed logic because he does get better when he evolves, you said that in the thing, and the moves he learns, like Iron Head, Bullet Punch, um, uh, like even a stronger X Scissor, like I said earlier. Like, there's a reason why Scizor was in the top tier in OU back in Gen 4. Because, he, like, given Technician and, like, a Life Orb or, or a Choice Band, Bullet Punch did wrecked almost anything. So, yeah, I honestly do not understand what you're trying to say here. Like, ugh. You see what I mean when I said that at least other, some other articles, like, at least kind of had a point? This one, I just feel like is... He... I don't even know what he's trying to look at here. Like, is is he just, like... Maybe he really is just looking at him out of vacuum and, like, oh, this... Pokemon solely is even then Scizor is way better than Scyther in every single capacity because earlier on you were you were putting pre-evolution to evolution and saying that evolution is worse because reasons no, but you're not going to do that here even though Scyther doesn't stand a chance of beating Scizor in a fight or any coolness um event because Scizor would beat Scyther in that any day like Scizor is one of the coolest Pokemon out there so, yeah, I honestly do not understand, like, why you say that Scizor is worse when Scyther has way more weaknesses, lower attack, lower defense. Yes, it has higher speed, but so what? <laughs> Scizor knowing Bullet Punch remedies that. And they both have Technician, so you don't have that over him. I I honestly just, I can't tell you. Is literally bef like it it just confused me to no end but you know what uh, there's just there's two more of these that i'm just gonna get through them <sighs> and the dumbest one to come is number one of, of course it is <laughs> so uh, i'll spend quite a bit of time on that slacking slacking may have vastly higher stats than vigoroth but those stats are negated by slacking's passive ability true hunt True Hunt only lets Slacking move every other turn, allowing opponents to significantly damage or even beat Slacking before the Sloth Eye Pokemon can attack. Clearly this guy didn't play um, Ruby and Sapphire, or even Emerald, because Norman Slacking, well granted every single um, gym leader in that game was hard, but Norman Slacking especially was tough. Way tougher than his Vigoroth. I guess that Vigoroth could attack every turn with... You know, like with really high, um, with like slashes and stuff. But like that slacking, if you if you didn't have a Pokemon, actually he had two slackings at that. So if you didn't have a Pokemon that knew protect, that could easily just you know protect on the turns that he was attacking, and that could significantly deal damage back. Like that was the only case where Dustox was actually useful because it knew protect and toxic. So yeah, if you didn't have a Pokemon that knew protect and could easily deal out damage. It, that Pokemon took out your entire team, even though, even though it can only attack half the time. The time it did attack, Facade just wrecked you. Like, I had to go with like a Layron or some other Rock type in order to even come close to beating him. 
And I think in in uh, Emerald new focus bunch. So if you weren't a, if you weren't actually attacking him that turn, he would he would still destroy your rock or steel types. So yeah, yes, Vigoroth does have the ability to attack twice, or attack twice for every time every one time slacking does. But that one time slacking attacks is insane. <sighs> While Slackoth and Slacking share share a true hunt, Vigoroth, the evolved form of Slackoth and the predecessor of Slacking, for, fortunately lack, lacks a knowing ability. Instead, the following logical evolution chain, in which all three forms use true hunt, or the final or the final form discards true hunt, Nintendo Game Freak should be Game Freak because Nintendo doesn't really have any say in the development of Pokemon; they just produce, they just publish it. Chose to make Vigoroth oddly superior to its final form, which no, it's not actually. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Let me let me just pull up their their stats real quick. Here's Vigoroth, and look at these stats. Now, granted, you know, 80 attack, 90 speed. That's still really good. 440 overall base total. That's honestly better than you know a couple of final forms. Like that's not bad. Then we get to the slacking, who has the highest base stat total of all non-legendary Pokemon. All non-legendary, non-mega Pokemon. 670 base stat total. Attack doubles. Special attack goes up by 40. HP almost doubles. Speed goes up by 10. Special defense goes up by 10. Defense, 20. So you're telling me that slacking is better than Vigoroth when his attack it doubles. So, yes, Slacking can only attack once for every two times Vigoroth can attack. But clearly it doesn't matter because his attack doubles. So, the turn he does attack, he does at least as much damage as Vigoroth did. And Slacking and Vigoroth can't learn, um, can't learn Hammer Arm, like... Slacking can, which is a really, really powerful move, or or something like Punishment or Flail. Well, Vigoroth learns Focus Punch, Counter, I guess. I mean, he learned Counter actually before he evolved. Reversal isn't all that good. Like, I, I just don't really see your point of of why you're trying to say that Vigoroth is so much better just because Truant nerfs the over the otherwise OP Slacking. They're not just going to keep slacking with a 670 base attack stat or base stat total and then not have them nerfed in some way that literally does not make sense <sighs> Vigoroth satisfyingly replaces slack off while slacking is a disappointing evolution a disappointing now, granted, he's not going to be super useful, like, in-game, which, if that's what you're going for, sure. But in competitive, no one uses Vigoroth. But I've seen quite a few Psykings who straight up just use Giga Impact because on the turn that he'd be resting anyway, he's he's loafing around. So, choice band Giga Impact from a 160 base attack total... And then you're not dying the next turn because that high HP and insane defenses. So, I don't... It, Vig, Vigoroth just can't do that. I, and even if you did want... If, if you wanted to run a special psyching, you easily could with that 95 special attack. So, I don't... I, I just simply don't understand, like... Ugh. Despite his increased stats, Slacking is far more vulnerable than Psychoth, and thus is, in many situations, significantly inferior to Vigoroth. Sure, there are a couple of situations where Vigoroth might be better, I guess, like if you... Uh, but even if they both had a choice ban, like I said earlier, Slacking has doubled the attack of Vigoroth, and they did that on purpose. So... Yeah, regardless, Psyking will be doing at least as much damage as Vigoroth will in the two turns he gets to attack, unless Vigoroth Vigoroth's slash gets critical hit both times. <laughs> Even then, I don't think that would do more damage than a than one Giga Impact from a Slacking. I'm not 100% sure about that, at least, but like... Uh, 
I don't know. I, I kind of see where you're coming from. Like, yes, I can, in, like, arguably, I guess, could be considered worse because of Truant. But also, it could be argued his way. He's one of the best evolution because of those insane stats. And if you had something like Skill Swap or um, uh, Worry Seed that got rid of Truant, he's literally unstoppable. So yes, in certain situations, more like more than likely like through a, a like a regular playthrough, yes, he's not going to be super useful. But then again, Vigoroth isn't super useful through regular playthroughs either. Like, I've actually used just a Vigoroth in a playthrough, and like it was fine. But that 80 attack caught up with him really quickly. By the time I got to the sixth gem, he really like wasn't hitting super hard, especially in the Elite Four. Like slashes from him like barely did anything i mean they did stuff but like it wasn't like significant to that i feel like it was actually worth it over using a slacking so yeah so that's the only one on this list that like i could understand the argument in certain scenarios but the last one not only is this one like ridiculous it's you got your information wrong, <laughs> and you completely ignored certain aspects of the Pokemon that make him actually amazing. So, Shedinja. Yeah, uh, you know, the Pokemon that's actually viable in Ubers. He's, you know, no, he's useless, but whatever. Ninkata is one of those extremely rare Pokemon whose total stats decrease during evolution. They, they decrease because Shedinja has 1 HP for a reason. Of course the stats are going to decrease when a, when one of your stats is actually 1. <laughs> of course it's going to decrease like that. Ugh. Okay. The Pokemon may evolve into two different forms, Ninjask or Shedinja, actually both which he'll get into later and be wrong about, but whatever. Ninjask offers a traditional and practical evolution, giving Ninkata a massive increase in all in all stats except attack and defense. But but attack and defense are simply swapped. Let me let me look at Ninkata real quick. Okay, so here are the stats. Here's um Ninjask, here's the Ninja. Ninkata. Okay, yeah, I get what he's saying. Their attack and defense just swap. But yeah, everything else goes up insanely high, especially that speed on Ninjask. And then Shedinja, attack go attack doubles. Actually, it's the same as Ninjask, Ninjask's, and speed doesn't go up. But why would it? He's a, he's literally a floating husk who's possessed. Like his stats just aren't going to go up. Plus, if his speed was any higher, I feel like it might be a bit OP, considering his ability. That this guy just doesn't mention. But I'll get that. I'll get that in a second. Shedinja's stats are there's ninja's stats nearly resemble Ninkata's except for one significant variation. Nearly resemble his attack doubles. And well and also like it makes sense that Shedinja's defense decreases so much from, from Ninkata because you this Pokemon literally doesn't need defense. Like his defenses could be won also, and it wouldn't matter because he doesn't need them, which again I'll get to in a second. And yeah, that doubling attack, like 90 attack, is actually pretty good, especially for a bug for a for for a bug type like this. She didn't just stands no chance of survival in battle thanks to its laughable HP. Makes Shedinja one of the worst Pokemon despite being a final form. There we go. There it is right there. This guy completely forgot about Wonder Guard. One of the, if not the best ability in the game. Only super effective moves, status conditions, and weather effects can't even hurt this thing. Which is why it's viable in Uber, because you don't really get that many Toxic Stallers or Sand-based teams. And most things in Uber are either Dragon or Psychic type, so they're more than likely not going to have something that's super effective. Like, most Mewtwo don't run Shadow Ball. So, this thing, like, I've seen actually do pretty decently in Ubers before. Because they just don't have anything that can really hurt it. 
And if you play your cards right, you can defeat opponents that do have something, and then you send him out there, and he's home free. Like, he can't do anything. Give him a focus sash, and he has two turns to, to mess around. So, you're claiming that he's so bad because he has one HP, yet you're ignoring the fact that he has the best ability in the game? You're... That's just... You're, you're just simply leaving out information, or... in if you're... And if you're just ignorant on the matter, then don't write this article. <laughs> Either way, you're incredible. <sighs> it's incredible how incredible you are. <sighs> if you happen to have an empty slot for a Pokemon and, in some games, an extra Pokeball, your Nincada will evolve into a Shedinja rather than a Ninjask. Again, that's incorrect. It'll evolve into both. That's what the empty slot is for. What, what do you think happens to Nincada if the empty if Shedinja goes to the empty slot. Would it just are you assuming that Nincada just disappears and then Shedinja just shows up in the empty slot or or it stays a Nincada? Or it uh, As a circumstantial punishment, Shedinja is the most radical and disappointing deviation from the Pokemon formula and represents the greatest flaws in the series. It, greatest flaws in the series? Are you insane? That, that uh, he has such low stats because he has one of the best abilities in the game. Ghost and Bug. It has like a decent amount of weaknesses, but like a lot of them aren't that readily available. I mean, Rock, yes. Ghost, eh. Dark, eh. I mean, flying, eh, fire more so, but, like, a lot of these weaknesses that he does have aren't really all that common, in competitive at least. And, like I said, if you just give him a focus ash, he'll survive two turns. Granted, there's no sand or toxic up. So, uh, you're bagging so hard on this thing for having one HP, yet... You're completely ignoring the fact that they gave him 1 HP for a reason. <sighs> and then you try to argue that he's so bad because Ninkata either evolves into Shininja or Ninjask when he evolves into both, so you don't have to choose? I... <sighs> okay, I think I'm done with you. Um, like, literally zero Pokemon on this list are actually worse than the Revolution. I I don't even think there really is a Pokemon out there who actually is worse upon Evolution. Like, there are certain scenarios where, like, certain Pokemon could be better. Like, an Eviolite Porygon 2, sure, actually is kind of better than Porygon Z in certain situations. But just as a Pokemon, Porygon Z is at least as good, if not better, than Porygon 2. And I know there are others out there that, like, the pre-evolution, like, could technically be more useful. But I'm, but being more useful and the evolution being worse are not necessarily related, but not necessarily the same thing. Like, Rattata. Fear Rattata <laughs> is way more useful than any Raticate out there. But Raticate is still a better Pokemon than Rattata. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, if you disagree with me at any point in either of these videos um, about any of these Pokemon being wetter or worse or whatever than their pre-evolutions, pre please tell me in the comment section down below. And if you can think of any Pokemon who actually are worse than their pre-evolutions, please tell me. I'd like to you know, have a conversation with you. And I think at some point soon I actually might make a video of, like, my 10 least favorite Pokemon, but that that's more than likely not going to be at all related to the fact that they're worse than their, evol their pre-evolution. That uh, might be a factor, depending on, like, on where I put certain stuff, but yeah, so I, I think I'm done here. Um, and like I said, if you haven't seen part one at this point, uh, um, go see that. Uh, I don't know why you wouldn't watch this far without seeing that first. Anyway, but you know what? Whatever. Um... And yeah, if you, again, want to watch me do more videos like this, please uh, tell me in the comment section down below.
I'll see you next time. See you.